This is a Dell Inspiron 3520 that I got off of Facebook Marketplace. It was sold as untested and for not working. Can we download Tiny11 and make this laptop usable 12 years later in 2024? I got this laptop when I bought the lot of 8 laptops for $40. If you want to check out that video, you can check it out in the top of the video right here. But this computer cost me $5 basically. And I actually got it running. I spent all of yesterday updating it. And I'm pretty sure it's on one of the first versions of Windows 10. So that was something to sit there and update this on this hard drive. I like older laptops because you're able to open them up and actually, you know, work inside them without taking apart the entire laptop. That's not the case with this computer. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be upgrading in this video. I don't want to deal with... uh taking it apart because it's already taken up enough time yesterday and if I would have known this yesterday then I would have done that first. This laptop currently has Windows 10 downloaded. The drivers for the CPU don't even support Windows 10 and only goes up to Windows 8 so that's something but we're gonna try to download Tiny11 onto it hopefully not have any issues. See if we can get this into a working computer maybe download OpenOffice see how it runs that. Let's get this started. Before we download Tiny11, I want to just go into Windows 10 and just see how it runs. We can see that half of the RAM is being taken up just idle. While the CPU does have some bumps up to 10, 20%, it is keeping under 10% most of the time, which seems all right. I'm going to open up a new tab in Edge, and that way we're going to go onto YouTube, see how long it takes to actually do that, and pull up a video. As you can see, it took a while to load. I did not expect much. Last time I got on this computer, it wouldn't even open a tab. But just running YouTube is using 70% of our RAM and almost half of our CPU. Also, the speakers on this laptop are not that good. There's no other thing for me to do. I mean so I downloaded Tiny11 onto a USB stick using Rufus and I put it in the laptop. It was at this moment that my capture card decided to not work anymore. I went through the normal steps of downloading Windows 11. I didn't have any issues encountering downloading or anything via the hard drive or any drivers and just like that we are in the windows 11 setup menu i did everything that i was supposed to and got windows 11 downloaded now that we have everything downloaded and installed we can see that half of the ram is still being used up but the cpu seems to have less utilization this time around now that my capture card is working again i want to choose a better browser than microsoft edge just because it utilizes the CPU and RAM a bit too much for my liking, so I'm actually choosing Opera GX because of the fact that you can limit the CPU and RAM usage. Now that we're on Opera GX, we're going on YouTube just to see how it performs, and with the CPU and RAM limiter, it's actually running pretty well. I'm able to watch 720p YouTube with only a couple frame drops when I'm watching it. I will say that browsing the web was not as bad as I was expecting. Besides the slow loading time at the start of each website, I'm able to access the website and I mean everything is loaded on the website. There's not things left out or blank spots and with Opera GX's built-in ad blocker, I'm not seeing any of the ads either. And the built-in DVD player is working perfectly fine as well. I actually ended up using that laptop that night to watch a movie with my girlfriend. Now we're downloading OpenOffice, which is an open source Microsoft Office basically. And we're going to use this, see how this computer holds up. And I know that there's going to be no issues because typing on this thing is perfectly fine and there's no lag whatsoever. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to install Steam. Now I know that Steam isn't going to run that well and I'm expecting to go through hell and back for it. And Steam is not wanting to respond. Looks like I was correct. Once I actually got Steam to respond and got a game downloaded, I ran into this weird issue where Steam would freeze if it was fro if it was just sitting there. But any time that I moved the window around and like jiggled it around, it would actually start working again. And that just confused me so much. So I had to sit there for like 10 minutes just wiggling this window around so that Terraria could download. Speaking of Terraria, that is the first game that we're gonna 
benchmark today. It's running at 1366 by 768p, which is the native resolution for this laptop. And it's running at an average of 40 FPS and hitting a minimum of 30, which is not bad, honestly. With the dips not being too far down, I mean, this is technically a playable experience, just more of a slower one. The next and last game that we're going to be benchmarking on this laptop is Minecraft Beta 1.7.3, which is also running at the native resolution, fast settings, and we only got an average of 27 FPS. And there's times where this had so many stutters and the FPS has dropped so much to where it was not playable. We did have a maximum of 66, and so I think if we capped it at 30, we, we might be able to have some of the power be utilized and have a more smoother frame rate. Overall, this laptop now is more usable than it was before. Windows 10 technically used a little less on the RAM, but surfing the web was just way less usable, and I think Opera GX was a good option. The only reason I chose that was because I can limit the CPU and GPU, and I didn't want to go into a third-party uh, internet explorer. So I wanted to stick with something mainline, and Opera GX seemed like the best option for that. Would I use this computer? Probably not, no. I mean, <laughs> the things that I do are a bit more graphically intensive, and video editing, stuff like that. I mean, even for my personal computer, or laptop, I mean, I use a lot of stuff, and I do a lot of stuff with Access and Microsoft stuff, and I wouldn't be able to use OpenOffice for my schoolwork and stuff like that. But would it be usable for someone else? Most definitely. I could think that this computer could have life in many ways, whether it's just watching DVDs and using it as a virtual media player, watching 720p YouTube, or just doing some basic office or schoolwork. I think that this computer can make a, uh, a decent first laptop for someone. I think that Linux would probably be a bit better for this computer but I wanted to touch in that on a future video with another laptop that I got from the same lot. And I'm hoping that that works even better. I'm gonna have to buy a replacement battery for that, but once I do, I can start making a video on that. And I'm actually hoping to use that as a travel laptop. But the fact that we have Windows running on a second gen i3 processor is pretty crazy, honestly. It's not the best, like I said, there is some slow loading times with surfing the web and you can't really watch 1080p or 4K YouTube, but those are the downgrades that you have to take when you're getting a really cheap laptop like this and an older laptop, obviously. I mean, this laptop is over 10 years old, but the fact that I can still use it to surf the web, watch YouTube and movies. I mean, the speakers could be better. Same with the display. It has an all right keyboard, but what can you ask for? It was $5 and I now have a completely usable computer. That's all I have for you guys today. If you like this video, hit that like button down below and subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys next time.